like this chapter. It is, it's a switch from what I have on the syllabus. I did say that last time, but some people did well on the test. Hey, I tried. Kalia kicked, kicked its butt. I'm telling you. Yeah. So, okay. So, do me a favor. Two things. I need the uh, syllabus because I'm changing what I'm doing. I was going to do trig. Um, but you need a little bit more hand-holding for the trig section. I want to be here for it. Um, so I'm going to be doing the chapter 18, which is the last chapter of the book. Okay, so chapter 18. Second thing I need you to have out is the bright colored sheet of paper that has the formulas, and it's a pure math one. Because there are two formulas on it that correspond to what we're going to be doing. So the good news is you don't have to have anything memorized. Please. I'm waiting. Talk a little bit about what we're going to be working with. There you go. Quite impressive. Okay, so that is a circle. Thank you. You like it too much? Yeah. You do know I used to teach elementary school, and those poor kids, I'd have to draw all the time for math, and I'd make them clap. <laughs> I was like, just bear with me, because that's the art, the artiste is not there. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working with circles, and circles, um, most especially the outside part of it, and also the area of this. So, of course, I have to make it so you can memorize it a little easier. You have two formulas on there. Um, one says the area of the circular sector, and one says, I'm going close, you're going to get a close-up, the arc length of the circle, okay? So, my perspective, this looks like a piece of pizza. Y'all with me there, right? So, the arc length is the length of the crust of the pizza. So when I'm referring to arc length, I'm talking about crust. When I'm talking about the area of the circular sector, my reference is the actual slice of pizza. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for the area of this guy here. Okay, does that make sense so far? So the arc length, also known as the pizza crust, okay, what is the formula for that? So you're looking at that bright colored sheet of paper about halfway down under trig. What is the formula for arc length? R theta. So it's what is though? It's S equals R theta. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And then what is the area of the piece of pizza? <clears throat> you have it right there also in front of you. S equals one half R squared theta. S equals one half R squared theta. Okay. Why S? I couldn't give you that insight. I just know that they use S every time. So. <laughs> so. Um, the two different ones that we're going to be working with are S equals R theta and S equals one half R theta. <clears throat> so before I get going in this problem, <clears throat> sorry, a lot of times we try to look at the formula and make sure we understand the components that make up the, the formula, right? So what do you think R stands for? Radius, radius right? Mm -hmm. So the R is always going to be talking about the radius that we're working with. Radius, by definition, is from the center of the circle to any point on that circle. Okay? Now, once in a great while, they'll give you something called the diameter. If you have to use the radius instead, you would do what to the diameter? Divided by two. Cut it in half. Divided by two. So this brings back all the fun stuff we did in, like, the geometry with shapes. That's not terribly difficult. We understand mm -hmm. R right now. So, not bad. So what about theta? Okay, so it's this thing right here. It's the angle, so it's the point of that piece of pizza. That's what we call our reference, our reference angle. So it's that, that is theta. Okay? Sometimes you'll be given theta, sometimes you will not be given theta. Can you reach back in your soul in your soul of math and think? If I don't have the value of theta, but I need to find the value of theta, how would we have done it in geometry? What methodology would we have used to solve for the angle that we were missing? Yes? Wouldn't you use like the um, cosine, sine, tangent? That's right. Exactly right. You would be using SOHCAHTOA, so right? You would know that sine over cosine, so we, we're going to go back and reference this. Hopefully that's not something new. We've talked about it already this year. We'll be talking a little bit more about it today. Yes? What did you say theta 
Theta represents the piece that, like the point of that pizza, it's the angle. That's our reference angle. Okay. Now, here's my question. What if I'm talking about this angle, but yes. I'm given that? Minus. Oh, so it's 360 minus. So truly, this full lesson is going to go back into your treasure chest of tools of math, and it's going to be, I know how to do this because I remember this from this class. Yes? It's the degrees of radius. Depending on the actual problem, um, if you, the majority of them, they're going to be in radians, okay? Um, one of the things that you need to remember is something we talked about earlier this year as well, is that pi is equivalent to what in terms of degrees? Pi over 180? Yeah, so 180 degrees. So pi rad, pi radians, that's the measurement, is equal to 180 degrees, okay? So if you're given, for example, 45 degrees, could you convert that to, to radians? And we talked about how to do that. So let's go ahead and look at what, what that means. If I'm trying to convert 45 degrees into radians, how do I go about doing it? Okay. Multiply, by Multiply by 180. Pi, pi over 180. So I'm trying to get rid of degrees, want the result to be in pi's. Okay? So you just kind of multiply it through, reduce to lowest terms. This one should be one you remember pretty quickly because 45 degrees. Pi over 4. Right, takes four steps to get there, it's pi over 4. Vice versa, if they give you, for example, pi over 6, and they want you to reduce that and make it in terms of um, degrees instead of radians, multiply. multiply by 180 over pi, where these cancel themselves out, pi is gone, the radian part is gone, it's 30 degrees. Right. So if you're given something in terms of radians and you must use degrees, there you go. If you're given something in terms of uh, degrees and you must use radians, there you go. Nine times out of ten, they're going to give you the one they want you to work with. All right. So okay. Radians tell you they're not going to, there's no assume something. No. Okay. okay. Are we good so far? Okay. So. So, to me, the best way to work these problems is to just kind of dive in and, and work the problems. So you got a packet. Let's go ahead and look at one, um, and let's see if we can kind of pull ourselves through it and make sure we understand it. You're gonna. I'm gonna give you some old lady tricks. Lots and lots and lots of old lady tricks, and we're gonna go from there. Okay. Um, I want to look at May June 2006, number seven at the bottom of the page. <clears throat> Once again, doing these problems is going to bring back everything you've learned, um, and, and, and then some, but we'll get to that. So, we have May, June, 2006. We have a nice circle. We have this, and this is eight centimeters. This comes off. This comes down like so. This is 15 centimeters. This is also 15 centimeters. Okay, so does it, does it look just like it? It's on the packet. You guys have it right in front of you. You don't have to draw it. It's easy to draw. Oh, thank you. Mine looks almost like it. Okay, the diagram shows a circle with center zero. So the first thing I think of when they say the center is zero, the lines that are coming off of it that are hitting the circle are called? Radius. The radius, right. The radii if you're talking about both of them. Because anytime you start from the center to the circle's end, edge, you are talking about the radii, the radius. Okay? So, I know that the radius from O to A is 8. Then I also know something else. The radius from O to B is also 8. Mm -hmm. So I can go ahead and label that out. Now, is this something new? Absolutely not. Yeah, I'll get that. Okay, moving on. It says point A and B lie on the circle, okay? The tangents to A and B meet at the point T. And AT equals BT equals 15. Already labeled as 15. Okay, so back in the geometry world, you would have done lots and lots and lots of proofs. Question mark, did you? No. Okay, okay so back in geometry world, you didn't do proofs, but you did um, learn some things about, for example, if a tangent line comes off a circle, 
things that you need to know about that. Anybody remember anything that comes that comes like that? Yes. Tangent line is perpendicular to the radius. Absolutely. So we know that OBT is 90. Okay, so things that back in the treasure chest of, of uh, geometry tool knowledge. And trust me, I'm not expecting that you remember everything from geometry, but what we'll go over today is good review, maybe good learning, however you want to call it. So because it's from the radius and it's a tangent line, this is a right angle. Mm -hmm. Okay? So when things become right angles, that also brings other things into play that we've used before. What, right, what do I think of first when I think of right angles? Right triangles. And what do I think of that we use with it? Pythagorean theorem, right? Another tool that potentially could be used. So right here, mm -mm, I also have a right triangle because mm -hmm. coming off the radius, hitting a tangent is also going to provide a right angle. So far, so good? Now, think about this with me for a minute. So it's a kite. It's a kite. It's a kite. Okay. Having said that, let's see what the question is asking us to do first and foremost. Find the angle of A and B. Sure okay. Find the angle of A, O, B and show it's 2.16. Is that what it was? So angle... AOB is 2.16 radius. This automatically tells me I'm not working with degrees. Does that make sense? Yes. So to answer your question, I know I'm not working with degrees. It's given as a radius. Oh. Here's a question I have for you. Yes? Well, I'm just trying to figure it out. Can we like, make a line from B to A and make a triangle? So it's not, why am I going to say no from B to A? I should go where? Why? It cuts the it cut, okay, so I'm going to go from O to T with a very, very straight line. Then I'm going to go to OT. You're going to find the angle right Yes. There. So I'm going to have a right triangle. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have another right triangle, no longer a kite, right? Right triangle, right triangle. I'll find this angle using, that angle the other angle, right? using SOKATOA, the method of SOKATOA. Yes. Well, they'd be the same. They would. So I should just, so you just add, add, them. add them or double them, right? Okay, you guys know, see, again, treasure chest of tools, you know how to do these problems. So if I'm looking at this and I need to find this angle, then double it, I'll have the whole angle. Let's go ahead and go through the process. So from this reference angle, this side is opposite and that side's adjacent. Everybody cool with that? So we are going to use tangent. Okay, so tangent of theta is equivalent to uh, 15 over 8. Yes? Yes. How did you know to do like the dashed line? I know that I have a kite, uh -huh. right? And I know the only way that I can use SOKATOA is if I have right triangles. Mm -hmm. So if I cut that kite in half, I now have the right triangle that I need. Did that, have, did that clarify it for you? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you know what? I'm going to tell you a hint, the old lady hint. About 95% of the problems, you're going to cut that, whatever that thing is, down the middle and make two right triangles. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. Wait, how did you know B and A were right triangles? Okay, so by definition in geometry, things we were supposed to learn in geometry, is that when a radius hits a tangent line, it creates a right triangle. Okay? Okay. okay. So let's review how we solve this, okay? So, everybody get your calculators out. Yeah, I want to review that. Okay, so we have um, first step, what you're going to do is you're going to actually find 15 divided by 8. So when you take and you come up with that fraction, what do you get? 1.875, you said? Okay. So now I have tangent of theta is equivalent to 1.875. Now, question to you. Question to you. We're doing these problems in this particular case in radians or degrees? Radians. radians. So what should my calculator be in? Radians. It should be in radians. It's so important that you check your calculator's mode. Make sure it's in, in the right mode. How do you get there? Oh, that's a good question. How do you get there? Isn't it you, pr it you press DRG and you go to RAD. And then you go to RAD. You got it? Yeah. You go in and have some. Film. <laughs> Are you surprised I'm eating? No. Okay, there we go. So, here we go. So we have tangent theta is equal to 1.87. I know my calculator is in the proper mode, okay? So then, 
you guys also should have learned back in geometry, hopefully, to solve for the letter, to, for the angle theta, you have to do what to both sides? Yes? Well, you do um, theta equals tan minus 1 of 1.875. Oh, very good. Tan to the negative 1 of 1.875. Okay? Why to the negative 1? It's called the inverse of that, the arc tan. So you're undoing the tan on the left by doing its inverse to get it gone. So because you can't divide it? Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, 1.08. What do we round to? The nearest three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you get theta is equivalent to 1.08. Mm -hmm. Now, my question is, um, what if I get some really wacky, wacky number? What should I do to before I go, oh, don't know how to do it? I'd go back to my mode to make sure it's saved in radiance. Because a lot of times people will go, change it to radian, and somehow it doesn't stick, and they're in degrees still. So ch check that, yes. How does going from degrees to radians change the answer, how it calculates it? Okay, let's talk about 1.08, what that means. Okay? Yeah, so it's 60-something if it's in degrees. So let's talk about a circle for a minute, because I love that question, so it makes sense to you guys. Let's talk about what a circle is, okay? You guys told me to go all the way around a circle. It's 360 degrees, right? Do mm -hmm. you agree? Yeah. Right? To go halfway, it's 180. To go a quarter of that way, it's 90, 45, et cetera, et cetera. You guys with me there? Mm -hmm. Now, what happens if I'm talking radians? So let's go ahead and take 360 and convert it to radians. So let's multiply it by pi over 180, and what do we get? 2 pi. 2 pi. Do me a favor and actually take that pi and stick it in the calculator as, what, 3.14, 1, whatever, whatever. Well, I think you might even have. And multiply that by 2 for me. Okay, so 6 point what? If you just double it, right, okay. So 6.28 radians is all the way around the circle. It's 360 degrees around the circle. So visualize 360, also known as 6.28. Does that make sense? Now, over here, 1.08, okay? 1.08. It's What's six, the, like the sign for radian? R-A-D, rad. So if 1.08 is the measurement that we're referencing here, it makes sense that it's just a, a slight portion of that around that uh, around the measure of it. Is that making sense visually how that works? Now, what would the whole thing be? Well, it's 2.16. Yeah, and then that's a, two is about 136. About, right, right. So are we good? So this is equal to 2.16. Go ahead. So that little angle or that whole angle? Okay, so the little angle was 1.08, and then we doubled it to get the answer that they were looking for. Answer A O B, right? Yes. What's 6.28? Is that like All the way around the middle, the whole, right. So 360 degrees is equivalent to 2 point, um, sorry, 3 point, 6.28. I was losing myself. I'm going to tear it off for two seconds. I'm going to test my sugar. Nobody needs to know that. Take that break. Okay, so it wants me to find the uh, perimeter of the shaded region. Yeah? Okay. So the shaded region is this, all this stuff here. Yes? Mm -hmm. So all that, yeah, it's part of the, it's part of the kite, but taking away the pizza, the piece of pizza. Agreed? Uh -huh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this, and I'm looking for basically the perimeter now, okay? So I know I have to go here, that's 15, mm -hmm. here, that's 15, and then the measurement of the crust. S equals R. And the measurement of the crust is S equals R theta. Is everybody, everybody oh, see that? Yeah. So I'm walking the perimeter, so it's 15 plus 15, and then I have pizza crust. Because... Perimeter means go around it, not the area. So everybody cool with the 15 plus 15. And then what was the, um, how do I find the pizza crust? 
radius, radius eight. eight times, times is it two point one six? The whole. It's well because the the crust is in is in reference okay. to that large guy there, right? So what was it? Two point one six. Go ahead and yes. Did you convert back to degrees with no, that? No, or? continue in radians. So when would like degrees versus radians matter? If the matter? original problem had degrees in it. It only matters when you do like the uh, tangent and cosine and sine. Yeah. What do we use as like our unit of measure for that? Okay, so um, it, it's centimeters, I believe, is what it says up there. 47 <laughs> I'm revving up with my sugar. Yeah. Couldn't come at a more perfect time. So what'd you get? 47.28. Cool. Now, it says find the area. Now, it wants me to find the area of the shaded region. Yes? So, we find the area of the kite and then subtract the sector, right? Which we all know is pizza, right? Yes. Okay, good, yeah. That's exactly right. So, you see it, you find the area of the kite and then subtract the circular sector, also known as the piece of pizza. Which is the mm -hmm. area. Which is this formula that I erased. What is it, one half one R squared R. theta? Yeah. Okay. So, let's do it. Are you guys thinking this is going to be an okay? Yeah. yeah. It's okay, right? Okay. All right, so, how do I find the area of a kite? It's one. It's Why don't you just find the area of the triangle? Find the area of a triangle and then do what to it? Multiply, Multiply it by two, yeah, right? The triangle involves half times the a half, half, so when you double it, you can just do one it times 15. Okay, so let's talk out loud. It's one half base times height times two. times two, or just eight times fifteen, which is the kite itself. Yeah. Okay. That's crazy. I know it's cool, right? That's like a square, but not really. Square is. It's like a square. It's the side times the. It is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's really. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool though, right? Yeah. Okay. Eight times two. Eight times two. And then what was the area of the piece of pizza? So it's minus one half r eight squared times theta, which was 2.16. And then you're going to put in your calculator and, and come up with the magic number. Remember, um, an area is something squared, so in this case, centimeters squared. Um, questions I have for you is, what if I couldn't do part I, but they gave me 2.16? Could I venture and do the rest of it? Yes. So you can still pull points if you can do the rest of it without having doing the work first. Yes. Well, they always tell you um, what the answer. the answer is. Yeah. Not always. Not always. But it's good when they do because then you can check your work because if you don't get the right answer, then you say, "Oh, I did something I did wrong." Something wrong, right? Yeah. That's crazy that that has the same area as like a square that's just eight. You're, you're still stuck on that. I, love I don't it. get it. It doesn't make sense. To me. <laughs> it's just a it's a rectangular tilted, I guess, in its way. Because it's like if you take rectangle and kind of mirror it. Yeah. Oh. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Did you think about um, anybody? Instead of having the short side touch the long side, short side. 50.8? Okay, good. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, it's just like. Blow your mind, having fun, right? Let's go to May, June 2007. Okay. So that's 50.88. Yeah, 50.88 is what everybody's saying they got. What are you thinking? I like it. I did okay by picking this chapter yes. when I'm gone. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'll never do that. No. Oh, you want to? That's just like both my money. So, May, June 2007. Do you think I was in high school thinking I'm going to be a math major? Yes. No. You are? I was not. Oh. <laughs> no, not at all, actually. What did you want to be in high school? Um, I started as a business major. Oh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's, That's crazy. crazy. Yeah, I know. Did you like that? I know. <laughs> I changed my major three times. Where'd you go? UF. Wait, what were you doing major? Um, business. Yeah. Business. Teaching. Accounting, I think it's a, I don't know. I have a minor in business. Oh, why didn't I get a I think I'm going to do that. Could have taught Ace Business. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not. Okay. I'm doing my best here. 
in the diagram, um, AOB is a sector of a circle with a center at zero and radius 12. The lines AX and BX are tangents to the circle at the point A and B respectively. What does that mean when they're tangents to that? No. Right, and that means what kind of angle do they mean? So 90 degrees, right? Okay. They also said the angle of AOB is pi over 3. The radius. Okay. Find the exact length of AX given your answer in terms of square roots. Of three. Oh, so where do we begin? Bless you. The whole thing. Divide it down the middle. 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 Divide it down because yeah. the angles are. So that's 12. Okay. And but we, now we have to find the length of, of AX. Okay. Look at so does that cut one third pi in half? Oh, good job. So what is half of <laughs> yeah, one third pi? Yeah, because we know one third pi divided divided into two also is multiplying it by one half. So you guys know it's pi over six. Wait, one third pi is the same as pi over three? Yes. <laughs> oh, that's true. So you learned a lot what from did me just today. Do? Okay. What? I thought it was one six. Pi, so pi over. Thing. I know, but like yes. it's like. Pi over three. Yes. If you want to cut it in half, you're dividing it by two, really? Yes. So. But you're really dividing it by two over one. Mm -hmm. like three. Reciprocal. So take the reciprocal. <laughs> so you have pi over three Why times. That What's that? Because we're cutting it. Cutting it up. Because no longer are we considering it pi over three. It's we're considering it pi over six and pi over six, right? Yes. Oh, catch by me. Nice. <laughs> so what are we trying to find? Ax. AX we're trying to find Ax. In terms of the square root of three. Is Ax and B? Is Ax and Bx the same length? Correct. Are we going to use tangent again? You're going to need some sine cosine. What is it in terms of? Square root of three, what does that mean? That means you don't want a decimal answer. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So like you said, in terms of 2.16, so it So it had to be in decimal, but this has to be in square, square, square Can't you find the length of, of x by using like some you like could. opposite? So you could, you could, but ultimately our goal is to find ax, agreed? Yes. Yeah. So does it make sense, and, and, and hear me out, this green dotted line, yeah. ax, and this are a right triangle, yeah. yes. right? Yes. I have a side and an angle of my right triangle. Right. And so this reference angle, what is that over here? X. But no, it's opposite, opposite right? Yeah, so opposite. this is the opposite side. And what's For this in reference? Adjacent. OK. So it's going to be x over 12. It's the tangent of pi over 6. So we go like this. Very good. The tangent of pi over 6 is equal to, we don't know, ax, right, over 12. That tell side. Me, tell me, tell me, tell Wait, yeah, I don't get that. Okay, can somebody else <laughs> maybe describe what we just did so that it can come out of somebody else's? Why don't you use a ninety degree angle? You would be you would be doing more work to find the hypotenuse first. Okay, you could. Oh, got it. Okay, are you sure? Awesome. Okay, so we didn't need it. Anybody else though? This is Kalia, this say it out loud now. Now that he explained it to you, can you give it to me the way he explained it? Okay, so once you cut that in half, that angle becomes. Okay, so you're looking the, as a question mark, right? Like, this is what we're looking for. It's our unknown. So we know that this is my angle. That's the opposite of my angle. We have the adjacent. So when I think opposite and adjacent, I should automatically think tangent. So tangent of the actual angle is equal to, we don't know, over 12. And the other one over there, we didn't know the angle. So we had tangent of theta equals something. So that's why it's changed a little. Okay, so now, what is tangent of pi over 6? We should be in what mode? Radiant, Radiant. 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 mode. Not degrees. Okay, anytime you see a pi or the word RAD, you know you're in radian mode. So what is tangent of pi over 6? Okay, so why would I say he did that wrong? You need to be in square roots. So, 
What is handy dandy? What is handy dandy at this point is when you know your square roots. Square roots. So, in my oh. <laughs> you guys are crying already. Ooh. Are we booing? It got wet over spring break. Oh man, <laughs> it suffered as it should. <laughs> I love it. So here's what I would think because when he yelled at a decimal answer, I'm like, no, it can't be that because they will not give you points. So I'm looking at pi over six, right here. Do you even get one point? Mm. You get zero points. You get nothing. What? No, right, don't don't get excited. We're, we're going to make sure you get this. How do I find the tangent? Remind me for a minute. My x value is my cosine. My y value is my sine. Tangent's equal to sine over cosine. So what is that? Oh one, one half, half over, over square, square root of 3 over two. 2. Well, because they have the same denominator, pretend the denominator's not there. In order to nominate. So it's so 1 is over y cosine. Sign. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is always the x over y or y over x? Y over x. Oh. So it, let me show you the work for it. It's one half over the square root of three over two. It's y over this. Oh, then reciprocal. But then we go right, and we go ooh two and two in the denominator. So it's one over the square root of three equals ax over twelve. Yes. I still don't really know how you do that. Okay, so you have your two, you know what I mean? Okay, so tell me, does it make a circle that can change okay. it gives y and x? So there's one half over the square root of so three you, over two. So do you Because it's just what it is, like in the thing. Oh, because here, it was one half over square root of three over two. And then you, you multiply that by the five over six. Where does the power of six go? That is five over six. It is. This is equal to this. Oh. So now I'm going to multiply by 12. So I've got 12 over the square root of 3 equals ax, basically. And they want the answer in terms of square root of 3, so suggestion would be not to leave it in the denominator. Do you remember how to clean that up? I have a question. Yeah. So you didn't cross multiply? You just multiplied by 2 over 3? Yeah. To get it out of the denominator? Because you're left with just ax. Yeah. I mean, you did. I basically did. Is it 4 to the square root of 3? That's what I got, but I was... Let me make sure. So 12 down. squared of 3 over the square of 3. Wait, what I do? It's multiply. 12 squared of 3 over 3. So it's 12 squared of 3 okay. over 3, which is 4 squared of 3. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, wait. Yes. So on the test, will, you, will we have like a unit circle to look at? Listen, on the actual ACE exam at the end of the year, you will not have a unit circle. But what my students typically do is they draw study one. that, they go and quickly draw it. Because I've taught you how to do it with ease, right? Yeah. You get on there, you just real quick write it down so you at least have numbers yeah, like to work points. with. There's a video of it. What? Oh. Of the unit circle. Oh, very good. I cheated with my calculator. I went through and did it all decimal, and at the very end I hit square, and it gave me 48. So look, square root of 48? Oh. Oh. <laughs> I, I like that. In terms of squares of three. Yeah, then you simplify that. Yeah, I just went through did a decimal and square that. And there we go. Did you hear? Why am I not smarter? Okay, so now what does it say? Find the area of the shaded region. Find the area of the shaded region. So, so how do I find the area of the kite? What is the area? One half base. Tell me what the area of the kite is. Base times height? Yeah. One half? No. So, 12 times, 12 times 4 is <laughs> Weren't you so excited? <laughs> this is your thing. This makes me think too I got you. So, 48 square root of 3 is the area of the kite. Everybody cool with that? Minus. How do I find the area of a piece of pizza? Well, it's 1 half r squared theta, right? Mm -hmm. So, minus 1 half, what's r? 12, 12 squared, and what was theta? One third uh, pi over three or one third pi. Okay. So you're going to clean it up and leave it in terms of square roots of three. It's going to be ugly for an answer. This is done. Uh, 12 squared is 144. Divide by two is 70. <laughs> and 72 divided by 3? 24? Yep. So 24 pi.
Mm-hmm. And the beauty is you all have a calculator. So you just left that? Leave it ugly. Leave it ugly. Leave it ugly. Like, leave it. It when it says it wants it in terms of square root, you leave it ugly. So that's done. Just like that. Done. Okay? That's really the answer? That's really the answer. <laughs> okay, now. That was only... That's only five points. But whatever. That makes me a little sad. From the perspective, uh, I want to go. Do we have time? Yeah. October, November 2010 slash 11. How big is the point daily per problem? Um, Are there is, ever like 10 point questions? This type is typically like a six, a six point, maybe an eight. Woman, who do you think we are? Did you look at the problem? Are you serious? Which one is it? 2010 slash 11. Well, <laughs> so Are you guys going to be okay without me on Monday? Uh, you know not say. Oh my god, there's two? Oh, there's so two. two. <laughs> Wait, one? I already found a right angle. Like, that's all that matters. That feels good, right? <laughs> that's all that matters. I didn't. Oh no. You'll see it, Maddie. A I, see, I found two right angles. Oh, oh, oh. oh. There's a tangent line that hits both circles. Okay, I didn't get that far, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll never get that far. <laughs> He's just excited. He <laughs> Show that RS is eight centimeters. Oh my gosh, I've seen what if these things. Okay, so I have a question. Like, what if you just put like RS equals eight centimeters? <laughs> Would they just? Give Would you, you get one point <laughs> from oh the right answer? No. <laughs> okay, so you figure something out, Marianne. Tell me what you figured. P, listen, if I'm wrong, I'm going to be really sad. Don't be sad. PQ is 10 centimeters. Oh, how'd you get that? Because... Do it, do it. Because PT is 8. So why is it 8? Tell me why. Because it's a... Ooh. Radius. It's a radius? Yes. <laughs> so then, you know that... That PT is 2. is also 2, two, two. because it's a radius. And then you add them together, bam, PQ equals 10. And uh, PRS right angle. So PRS right angle. PQ. QSR yeah, right angle. Q, Q, S, R. R. Also right angle. Good, good. I'm done. I'm done. Right. We don't know. We're just, we're oh, you're just analyzing it. All right. I'm just She's getting my numbers. Listen, right when, you, when you analyze it, it makes life easier because you have things to work with. That's what I So mean. show that RS is 8. So how do we go about showing R, S, is 8? Well, you can do P to S and draw a line. You get two right. Wait, what are we oh, no, to? just kidding. R, S. I'm trying to show that R, S is 8. Oh, um, I know a way. Tell me. All right, so what if we did a line parallel to R, S, going off of Q and hitting the radius of that circle? That's what I would do. All right. So let me show you what he's saying. Take this mm-hmm. and do a straight line across. Oh, and make it that way. Line. So, well, what do you have now? Rectangle. A rectangle, and you also have a right triangle. A, a right triangle. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. And what do we know about it? We know that this side is ten of the right triangle, right? We that's know. That's we know this is what. Six. Six. Six here. Oh yeah. And so it's two. Two here. Yeah. But, okay. Now, Excellent. So. Does it make sense that if we find orange dotted line with Pythagorean theorem, right, then we also find this yes. side down here? Okay. This is Pythagorean theorem. So 6 squared plus b squared equals 10 squared. Yes, because you have this whole side is 10 because Mary Ellen discovered it. Yes. Right? So you know a squared plus b squared is c squared. So you have 6 squared plus, we don't know yes, squared, that's eight. Awesome. is 10 Boom, squared, did it. right? 13. So 36 no, plus B eight. squared is 100. Let's say that again. Oh. Okay. Oh. So, <laughs> so B is 8. Got it. Woohoo! Right? I feel so accomplished. So if this guy is 8, then we know this guy is 8. Yeah. Done. Mm. Worth 2 points. Now, the key to that was recognizing that right triangles are the key to get these easily done. Try to find any right triangles you can. I'm the angle of RPQ. 
So now it wants me to find the angle of RPQ. So it wants me to find this guy here. Well, I see a right triangle there mm -hmm. that I can just use the sides of it or whatever, right? So I know that if this is what I'm looking for, I've got the opposite. I've got the um, hypotenuse and I've got the adjacent. They have several different options. You whatever can... option you choose. Now, should it be... Um, if I'm looking at the, the question, it says in radians, mm -hmm. and then it says four significant figures. So my calculator must 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 be in radians, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So it's going to be. Let's use um, tangent. Yes. Yeah. Use tangent. So tangent of theta is equal to opposite, which is eight, over adjacent, which is six. I plug 8 divided by 6 in my calculator, get a decimal answer. By 6. Um, this is the opposite side, this is the adjacent side. Oh, you're, saying, you're not going from R? Well, we're looking at the right triangle. Uh, what is it, 1.3 repeating? So, tan of theta is equal to 1.33, we'll just do 4. <laughs> okay, take, and then you do what? Arc tan, okay. So theta is equal to t to the negative 1 of 1.333. What do you get? Point. <laughs> hey, make sure you switch your calculators back to decrease the different colors in this. Oh, no. Okay, so on Monday, you guys will be doing these types of problems.